Hello, Lila, and good morning, lovelies. Welcome to Terrapin Fiberworks Dye Studio here in Annapolis. Lila, why don't you uh, tell us about your studio and show us around? Yeah, um, this is my new space, so welcome. Um, I just got this about three weeks ago. Ooh. Um, very little. Uh, let me think, what else do we need to know about it? We can give, take you on a tour. So this is where we do all the yarn now. Um, we moved in here, I'm shipping out of here, I'm dying out of here, I'm making the mess in the middle out of here. Um, it is primarily our workspace. We're down in Annapolis now, so. Very exciting. Yeah. How do you like being in the arts district? <laughs> it's nice. Uh, everybody here is really friendly. I've been meeting a lot of the restaurant owners here, so. Well, awesome. Yeah. Well, why don't you show us what you have? I see you've got like a few skeins, like, dyed up here on the racks yes. and it looks like you've got loads of bases and oh, dye yes. pots at the ready so yeah so the way i kind of have this organized is a like a back to front production situation so i start in the back to dye everything and then once it's actually done and dry it's up here in the front um let's take us back yeah, and show us let's start at the beginning then because that'll make it easier <laughs> spoiler alert all of that is one of a kinds for next month so, Woohoo! If you want something that's an official color, Love the Arts has it. Um, all right, so welcome back. This is my my sink. Most of the stuff happens here. Cotton, um, as you know, it requires a bit of water um, to dye and to rinse. So mm -hmm. I'm back here a lot. Um, this is kind of my area where I mix up dyes. I set my pans out on these open tables and. Apply the dye, however that's done. Um, with a bunch of restaurant pans, that's how that's, that's how that works. Um, my buckets for um, pre-treating the yarn. Um, if it were natural dyeing, they call that mordanting, like uh, uh, basically preparing it so that the dye will actually stick to the yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you're using acid dyes for plant-based fibers, right? They are fiber reactive dyes, actually. Oh. So, if you think, if you know anything about wool dyeing, you basically chemically it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's I use soda ash or washing soda to raise the pH instead of lower it. I, I think that's how that works. I said an alkaline. <laughs> um, so other than that, um, like it goes in the trays. It's mixed up as a, a liquid formula that goes on. Um, but I don't need any heat because the dye actually bonds chemically to the fiber versus being kind of set into it the way that it is for animal fibers. That's interesting. So you don't have to have like big hot crock pots and not really. I use hot water when I rinse because. Cotton like has this reputation, right, for being uh, very water intensive, and so I'm trying to use as little of it as I can in order to just reduce our environmental footprint, basically. Um, but yeah, the only hot water we really use is in the rinse process. It's not not really a factor in dyeing. So. That's really interesting. So you can so when you do dye, so you pre-treat the yes, you pre-treat the yarn with soda ash yes, and then you layer treated hanks out in the different pans, and then Go for it. Yeah, so we saw you here. This is, uh -huh. I guess I said it was uh, back to front. It's a little bit hot. All, this is all the yarn as it comes into me from the wholesaler. These are all our different bases. I actually have a gigantic box at home that I need to bring out here and kind of stock up, so we're a little low right now. But um, this, all the pretties before yeah. they have their color. And they're natural. We have tensile, we have organic cotton. The clay is kind of in here chaotically. Like giant cones and stuff. Yeah, I've mentioned on Instagram a couple times before that I have this one base that only comes in cones. That's the Potomac linen, so I have to um, wind that up into skeins myself. So, so extra labor involved. A little bit. It, that's why it's priced accordingly. <laughs> but uh, that I makes love sense. That base. Um, yeah. So starts there. I pre-treat it. It comes around back to the tables and it gets put out on dye things. Um, it batches overnight, so I'm in here. Uh, a work cycle for me is about two days a week. So mm -hmm. I come in, um, dye everything the first day, rinse everything the second day. Uh, I just put away a big old drying that full of yarn that uh, Melissa just missed. So <laughs> that says that she can stand where she's standing to video save this. Perfect. So this is very cool. So before this, you were dying in your house. I was. And, and this is better. Oh yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> For reference, I think my house is about two of these stacked on top of each other, and you can imagine that oh, it didn't fit lot. so good. <laughs> yeah, that's an awful lot to fit in a yeah. small space. So. Minus the furniture, of course. But, uh, Look at that. Yeah, so what I was just doing um, before we were out on vacation was over dyeing a bit of stuff for, um, we have a one of a kind sale coming up next month. It'll be a two year anniversary, so that's kind of what we're doing for that. Oh, exciting. Um, so these are a 
this is a bunch of stuff that was like uh, seconds batches of colors from previous collections, but a lot of our one of the kinds like in the baskets here, I've, I've been sorting them in the past couple weeks. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're just trial schemes um, oh. of colors. I was developing them like this is an early version of an Iceland color here that I just wasn't really happy with what was going on with the speckles, so we did something different. Very um, nice. And so, and I've had people ask yeah. um, if there's like a custom colorway that somebody wants on one of your gorgeous bases. Um, do you work with customers that way? I unfortunately don't. It's just a little difficult to look it into my uh, cycle at this point. Um, mm -hmm. But you can always reach out to me because sometimes I have that color anyway. Mm -hmm. um, like just from previous stuff, I'm kind of like it's limited edition and then it comes back. So if it's not on the website, there's like a decent chance I've got something in the vault. Gotcha. So, and then do you keep like some sort of a dye book or a catalog of I your do. recipes? It's all in here. Aha! Because, the rectangle of knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I can't get this wet and uh, lose my notes. So it's all in here. Um, recipes by like dye weight, how much water is involved. But and with cotton, because it batches for so long, mm -hmm. that has a really big effect on how the fiber takes up the dye. So with, is cotton the most time-consuming base to dye? Like, is the tensile easier or faster? It is, actually. Um, because I don't... One of the pretreatments that I do with cotton and not with tensile is I need to scour it. It comes from the mill. It has, like, oils in it to spin it um, uh, more efficiently or some such. Um, so tensile doesn't have those oils on it, so I don't have to pre-wash it. Oh, so that it's just, is, like, one step removed. But. That is very nice. And, you know, you said that you're coming up on your two-year anniversary. Yes. How did you get into dyeing? Um, I got into dyeing because I taught myself crochet, and crochet uses a lot of cotton, and I also tend to have sensitivity to wool. Mm -hmm. um, I just can only use it in certain contexts, so I was using a lot more cotton. And when I kind of found the indie dye world on the internet, I realized that there's a lot of beautiful wool dyers out there, and like a handful of really amazing cotton dyers as well but like the ratio is like so and yeah. there were certain colors i'd be like oh i really want to like work with this but i could only find it on wool and not on cotton so i thought all right well, i'll teach myself to dye and if no one wants to buy these i'll use them so it's all good <laughs> uh and it, i don't know it just kind of took off from there so and you know luckily your colors are incredible and of course everyone wants to use them <laughs> uh i think i told you when i came in uh the show is selling out quickly which is great <laughs> so you know if our walls that were once like really packed are now a little less so <laughs> um the colors are Fabulous. What are your, do you have favorite colorways to dye? Yeah, here I can show you a couple of them. Cause all right, the, the spot where we started, I was saying most of this is a one of a kind situation. Mm -hmm. Sorry, well, no worries. Right here. Um, these are colors that are established in stock. It's like our very bare situation right now. Um, I'm about to ship this to somebody. This is bouquet mm -hmm. on the Atlantic Pima fingering. Um, Such a gorgeous colorway. I love this one. I think I think they might have run out of it at Lovely Yards actually, but it's really fun because this this pink and this purple and there's kind of this bit of ivory in here, and that just kind of it's like a tie dye splatter situation, just like whack whack whack, and then there's a little bit of speckling dust over top. Um, it's kind of quick and fun and artsy. Like I love the colorway, yeah. and it, it's it's just really beautiful. I like the high contrast pops that the yes. speckles have against yeah. sort of like this pastel background. It's really nice. Very sophisticated it's a lot color of fun. work. It's great fun. So that's a yeah. The thwack 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 sounds like a lot yeah. of fun to die. <laughs> it's good fun. I don't. I feel like I don't have a ton of colors that I make in that specific way. Like meaningful conversation is a little bit like that. Yeah, I really love that too. Yeah, that this beauty. kind of mint and teal type of thing. The speckles are done a little differently on this though. So those are a lot of fun. You just have to really feel artsy when you're... And then you just, uh, the Iceland inspired yeah. colorways that we have, those are new for you. They are new. And you said these are from... Uh, I've been, I do like maybe two themed collections a year. Mm -hmm. um, and so these, this is our second one for this year. Um, I, I went to Iceland like eight years ago. It was just kind of blew my mind. I've been thinking about it for eight years ever since. So I've been working on this collection for like eight months. Uh, and this is just, I finally got time to actually like prepare all the colors and release them. Cause I'd say it takes me a couple months to go from like my photo board of what mm -hmm. I want them to look like to actually have full samples on every base. Cause all the bases kind of tend to take dye differently. So I can't just dye you organic cotton and say, it'll all look like this. Cause it won't. 
right. utensils very shiny, for example. So yes, and the color comes out super intense yes. compared to some of the softer cotton bases, mm -hmm. like that Monaco Sea Blue Clay, which is so lovely and soft. Right, the color is very different there than when you see the same colorway on the ten cell. It is. It's much softer, more muted. So I love them both, but yeah, they you need to be able to see each thing on each base. So that that's a little bit of a process. I think I've been working on those samples since like maybe May. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. Um, and so are your other collections, what are, have they been inspired by? We have done, um, collection-wise, I did a New Year's box that was themed after the Lake Isle of Innisfree. It's a W.B. Yeats poem. Mm -hmm. So that was like a countdown box we did in December, and then I released it in April. That was our other one this year. Um, last year, we had a monthly club that was farmer's market themed. So mm -hmm. there's a couple. Here was beets. Uh, Russian oh. kale. I'm trying to think if that kind of a beets colorway is so great. Yeah. It's almost like an oxblood. It is. I, I don't do this anymore because the dye changed. So this is one of the few reasons I discontinue colors that everyone loves. Right. Um, so you have one left. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there were there were like 24 of these colors because I was doing two of them a month for a year. Um, uh, and then I did a, a Bridgerton inspired one last spring. So fun. That's, a lot of fun. that's what um, the meaningful conversation color is from. Oh, so, that's what that yeah, is from. It's for uh, Eloise. So, so where does the tipsy mermaid come from? This came from I really wanted to do this shade of teal, and uh, we've been doing like quarterly re-releases of those colors that I put in the vault. Um, and sometimes I just kind of have an idea for color that doesn't go with one of the themes I was working with. So. I just throw them into the quarterly introductions. I and love the name. This yeah, so it's a cocktail. It's, it's got, um, I don't know how to say this word, curacao. Uh huh. I think. Yeah, uh, it's got curacao and like pineapple juice in it. So, oh, very cool. Next yeah. time, go to the bar, folks. Try it out. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Um, and then, like, these are just so gorgeous. Like, we yeah. could spend all day talking about individual <laughs> colors. Uh, do, and then, your so you crochet. Do you knit I also? Do. So, I taught myself to knit because of this. Okay, yeah. so the samples that we have hanging in the store, and your top included. So did you make all the samples? Do you have test knitters who do that for you? Both. Um, I've started having sample knitters because there's just only so many hours in the day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I did make this. This was crochet. This was kind of a design I was considering, and one day I will finish writing the pattern, but at the moment, no. Um, <laughs> um, but I have a, a few lovely um, sample knitters who I've been working with for like the past eight months or so, and they do about two thirds of our samples, I would say. So what you've got hanging in the shop, there's like three or four of them that I did, and then the rest were done for us. So. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Lila. It's been such a treat to come and see, you know, where the magic happens, yeah. um, how the process works, and how it differs dyeing the plant-based fibers to dyeing wool. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's going to be, like, really enlightening to a lot of your fans and a lot of our shoppers. Uh, and again, to purchase any of Lila's goodies this month, you can go to lovelyorange.com forward slash terrapin. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and happy stitching!